गुड पीपल आर ऑप्टोमिस्टिक अबाउट द लॉकडाउन ऑल्सो दैट से दे इसी साल अपना टाइम आएगा इट्स वेरी गुड टाइम आएगा फॉर गेटिंग सिलेक्टेड इन पी जी एंट्रेंस नॉट फॉर कैचिंग एन इन्फेक्शन सो स्टे होम स्टे सेफ इज द मोटो ओके एंड वर्क फॉर होम एंड स्टडी फ्रॉम होम ओके राइट लेट मी गेट बैक इन टू बेसिक दैट वी हैव ट्राई टू डिस्कस इन द लास्ट क्लास ओके I'll wait for another one minute or so. Let all of the students uh, come on time. Okay. I had announced on the Facebook also that uh, we'll be having some initial discussion on <coughs> MCQs that we routinely find in various kinds of exam, maybe AIMS, NEET, PG, anywhere. so let's start with basic mcqs okay and uh, don't worry uh, you'll find all these questions somewhere in the i'll try to provide you a pdf also of these mcqs so don't worry okay now uh, look at this question it happens to be a big question uh you have just witnessed a young man with a past history of seizure disorder and uh, he happens to have a focal seizure his family description is uh, suggestive of focal seizure involving the left half of the body so we come across a young man right uh who happens to have a focal seizure over the left half of the body there is no history of loss of consciousness seen in the patient at all he was brought to us after the symptom onset not immediately and currently is awake or conscious oriented and the power in the left upper limb is 0 by 5 that is nil right with the rest of the neurological examination being perfectly normal that is wnl stands for within normal limit and the ncct of the brain is also wnl and wnl is a very standard abbreviation that you write for within normal limit now best course of action at this time would be what now let us figure out few key words in this big question he was a case of focal seizure at home on the left side of the body without any history of loss of consciousness so if i want to classify it it is a focal seizure with what intact awareness right and two hours after the symptom onset not immediately we found the power in his left upper limb where he had the seizure was 0 by 5 that means there was absolutely no movement seen on that particular limb correct now most of you are answering it correctly i'm glad that the whole story and the whole drama is better known as post ictal paralysis known as what the torts palsy now if it is a case of torts palsy following a patient of focal seizure what should i do should i go for a cerebral angiogram lumbar puncture mr angiogram psychiatric evaluation or reassessment obviously as i told you yesterday that this torts palsy all is well it is a self recoverable phenomena i hope you remember in the last time notes it is a self recoverable phenomena so needn't worry much about it it will settle down with time on its own so we need not chase it by doing some kind of a imaging technique like an angiogram that we do cerebral or mr angiogram now look at the answer you most of you have answered it correctly but your aim of seeing this kind of a question an answering should be like this what is the answer why it is an answer and most important above all you should know why not the other people in the race okay what is the answer why is the answer you know this now why not the other people in the whole options cerebral angiogram and mr angiogram now look at the term angiography i'm trying to visualize the vessels which are present in the brain earlier now this kind of an angiography is good enough to diagnose a disease known as subarachnoid hemorrhage not disease but the etiology of subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage a spontaneous non traumatic often occurs due to what 
rupture of the berry aneurysm now look at the history first there is no sudden onset headache there is no neck rigidity so it's pointless to think about sh and why should i go in for a diagnosis of uh, angiogram to rule out a berry aneurysm it doesn't fit in there well uh, lumbar puncture is something which is uh, totally out of syllabus maybe because lp is something that i do in cns infections correct now in this patient there is no neck rigidity no fever no altered sensorium so labeling him to be cns infection is not a very correct thing yeah psychiatric evaluation this is something you should all know about because a student uh, told me later on sir i will do go for d psychiatric evaluation i asked him why he told me sir because he is a young man <laughs> he might be having a problem which looks like a caesar known as what pseudo caesar correct i thought the student is telling his own experience about his life not the patient pseudo caesar can mimic a caesar i agree with you but look at the question now uh he is having a past history of caesar disorder now this is something very important a patient with a past history of caesar i don't label him as pseudo caesar so early so the best diagnosis will always be a true caesar there were many doubts on the facebook club i could see on pseudo caesar sir see pseudo caesar is a caesar which is not caesar but false it looks like this there is one thing that we can do in the patient is serum prolactin i hope in psychiatry you must be knowing this the serum prolactin goes 30 minutes post ictal in a higher amount so post ictal in a patient with a true caesar okay if i want to check upon yes in that patient uh, true caesar serum prolactin will be high post ictal for next half an hour time and the amount of prolactin can go up it till any amount but it is usually seen as post ictal for more than or approximately for 30 minutes time okay so reassessment in few hours is is the best thing that we can do for the patient now look let's look at this one liner kind of a clinical question that we have with us a 14 year old male has come to you with a history of sudden onset staring look followed by a confusion that you find okay now 14 year old male has come to you with sudden onset staring look followed by a confusion yesterday i was talking about this a stare look or a blank look will always go for what an absence seizure but in absence seizure we were very clear about this in a face which i know as the post ictal face yes there is no post ictal confusion seen at all in a patient with absence seizure so that's out of the race myoclonic yeah i hope you remember myoclonic jerks they always presented to me with a typical jerky movement they do not come to me with sudden onset staring look a tonic seizure yeah a tonic loss of tone that's very important now if patient has got loss of tone i was writing this in absence seizure yesterday tone means how am i standing how am i sitting it is my own posture so a tonic means there is going to be decrease in the posture of the patient or a sudden fall in the patient i'll tell you my experience on this when i was somewhere posted in pediatrics in my internship we used to often get kids coming from the assembly with a history of fall while standing and every doctor around us used to brand them as syncopal attack because kids were anemic most of the time but a good pediatrician would always see that child again and go for a eeg to diagnose a disorder which is atonic seizure because in atonic seizure the only problem they face and come to me with a history of fall so by exclusion when you don't know the answer by exclusion the best answer will be a that is focal seizure with discognition now what was that discognition i was told you yesterday that is focal seizure with impaired awareness same thing so focal seizure with impaired awareness and discognitive focal seizure are the same thing now look at this during the phase of discognition my patient happened to have a stare look at me now we have got a patient with us who has come to us with a typical stare look he just looks at me and stares at me this is a stare look correct now it could be a case of focal seizure as i described here or it could be a case of absence seizure also 
Now let's look at the quick differences between the two issues. What is the difference between a focal seizure, stair look and a patient with absence seizure? Now if you remember the age of onset, very very important thing, the age of onset for focal seizure can be any age while for absence seizure if you remember it was what? Petit mal epilepsy coming more often in the kids. So the age of onset was somewhere more often and commonly seen in the bracket of 4 to 8 years. After this, remember this, loss of consciousness, LOC, would be present in both of them. Yes, that's why they gave me a typical blank look. But I hope you remember in the yesterday's class we have discussed, in absence seizure, the loss of consciousness is usually found to be less than 30 seconds. While it is more than 30 seconds can last till minutes also in a patient with focal seizure. Correct? And I hope that means the duration, the duration of LOC is very short in absence and could be longer somewhere in the focal seizure patient. Now let's look at this aura. I hope you remember aura also. Aura is not seen in focal. Correct? Sorry, sorry. I'm very sorry. Aura is seen in focal while it's missing in absent seizure. So that's another quick difference between the two. Now we have a very important thing which I know as the post ictal confusion. Sorry for my bad handwriting. I don't have bad handwriting actually this is my font. How I write. <laughs> post ictal confusion. Now post ictal confusion was seen in focal while it's absent in absent seizure patient. We know this. Correct. Now, uh, number of episodes, number of episodes. How many episodes happen in a day? Now, uh, in focal seizure, the number of episodes, number of episodes is occasional. While in absence seizure, they are multiple. Yes. Why there are multiple episodes or absence seizure that we find? Look at this. What happens is the absence seizure episode occurred more often in children. Petit mal was the name, 4 to 8 years. And you know kids, they don't have legs, they have tires. They keep on roaming here and there. And when they keep on running, 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 they are going to do what? Hyperventilation. Yes. And now hyperventilation is going to provoke what? Absence seizure. Simple. So multiple episodes of absence seizure in a day could be found. While in focal, it's occasional. It's not that multiple times that we see. And we know the EEG. Yes. In EEG in focal seizure, yes, we are going to see focal abnormalities. Focal abnormalities in the brain could be seen. Okay. While in EEG of absence, uh, absence seizure, don't forget, 2 to 4 hertz, what? 2 to 4 hertz, spike and the wave, which got precipitated by a maneuver for hyperventilation. Just a quick reminder upon this thing also. Imaging. Imaging was something. Yes. In focal seizure, please remember. There are going to be some kind of discrete lesions which I was talking about yesterday. While please remember this. In absence seizure, neuroimaging is most of the time normal. Correct? Right. Otherwise, if it was showing some structural abnormality, I would have labeled this as not typical, but an atypical absence seizure. So please be careful on this. Can you tell me another seizure type? Can you tell me another seizure type that uh, uh, could be having a normal neuroimaging? Yeah. Yesterday we were discussing about this topic. Jovlein myoclonic epilepsy, JME. Correct. JME was idiopathic. Some people were asking me yesterday, sir, they doesn't have hypoxia, they don't have degeneration, they are most of the time of the unknown cause. Only that genetic problem is there with them. So next time, please remember this milpal concept. A patient came in an emergency with GTCS. He is our adolescent patient. Okay, you remember my history yesterday. Please go back and tell us the patient's relative or the patient. Is he having some kind of myoclonic jerks on awakening or not? Okay, so please remember this, JME is idiopathic, neuroimaging in them also is normal as well as in patients with typical absence seizure. Okay, 
but let me take you back into the question again a genuine student came back to the genuine doubt sir you have very smartly labeled this as a patient of focal seizure but where is the focal body movement we were considering a focal seizure because only one part of the body was being affected that's why we could label it as focal but can you show me where is the focal body movement okay now look at this please remember we are now trying to reclassify a seizure disorder now this is something which has happened uh, i believe uh, last year that we have tried to reclassify our seizure disorders okay now this is nothing new actually it's a old wine in a new bottle looks more expensive finds more tasty maybe but there is something which has come new that is a classification of a seizure correct yesterday we were trying to discuss this from the very basic seizure can be focal seizure could be generalized either of the two okay either of the two it can be either focal or generalized now focal seizure we have tried to classify this on loc if loc is present in the patient we label this as focal seizure with impaired awareness if loc is absent in the patient we label this as focal seizure with intact awareness this we know now something that you might not know is this focal seizure could also be classified clinically as motor or could be a non motor manifestation now this is something new we are trying to put into the whole story now what could be a motor manifestation of a focal seizure okay i have spent some time today and i have tried to record some videos on my end through which i can show you what could be happening with a patient okay first of all first of all it's not a patient it's me only at home at work i borrowed my kids room for this so you can see the dorimon and everything being stuck there's a lot of many things apart from this on the almira so there was a patient of focal seizure in the right upper limb and that very patient had a seizure activity like this now look at this okay find this out there is a patient in whom the tone of the muscle of the limb on right upper side of the body increased so we label this as what a tonic seizure look at this it's only involving one part of the body it's known as tonic seizure simple let me show other types also this very interesting thing okay ah uh, now this one some hanging is there don't worry i'll sort it out what is this this is a continuous jerky movement that's a continuous jerky movement of the right upper limb in the patient seen as what clonic okay clonic so there's a continuous jerky movement seen in the patient's limb that's known as clonic simple right let me show another one to you this is not a continuous jerky movement look at this i'll repeat this again this is not a continuous jerky movement correct it's a sudden abrupt jerky movement like this so this is something that we know as myoclonic a lot of students were asking me this doubt yesterday so what is the difference between clonic and myoclonic first thing is the spelling are different second thing is that the myoclonic yes was a sudden jerk only okay that's myoclonic if it was a continuous jerky movement if it was a continuous jerky movement i could have named this as clonic i'll show the clonic again to you so there is a continuous jerky movement that's clonic it's quite repetitive otherwise it's myoclonic is it's once only then i'll let's show you another one now look at this oh where has it gone
is trying to take the upper limb like you know right upper limb up and suddenly fell down yeah the right upper limb i was trying to take it up and suddenly it fell down there is a loss of tone in the muscle c what is this known as a tonic now this is known as a tonic kind of a seizure so we have tried to see them clinically yeah now i'll ask you this if you can tell me this i'll be very happy what is this This is a typical uh, TikTok kind of a moment, TikTok video kind of a moment. Yeah, it's known as the Jacksonian march. Okay, the Michael Jackson dancing, known as the Jacksonian march. Okay, so this is known as a, no, 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 not flapping, not flapping. So this is known as a typical Jacksonian march, a focus seizure, which started distal when proximal or other way around. It's known as Jacksonian march. Okay, right. Uh, I'll show you another one. Now look at this. I'll be really happy if someone can tell me what am I showing you. The right upper limb, there was a movement, then the right lower limb, and then the facial twitching also happened. What is this? Let me play this one again. this is a focal seizure let me show this again it became generalized later on okay <laughs> okay it's very funny yeah it started in the right upper limb went to the right lower limb and then the facial twitching also happened okay so it's becoming like a gif kind of a thing for you good interesting so this is known as a focal seizure with secondary generalization right we've seen that we heard about it yesterday Okay, 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 okay. I'll show you this one now. What is this? Can someone tell me what is this? I don't know the sound is coming at your end or not. Yeah, this is a GTCS. You look at this again. I'm trying to put a pressure on my abdomen because I've come with a pre-monetary symptom, abdominal pain. Yeah, the tonic phase occurred. There was flexion of the upper limb with extension of the lower limb, the decorticate, followed by a clonic phase. And remember that intercostal muscles started contracting. Yes. Push the air out of the lung. Then the clonic phase happened and then the flaccid phase happened, right? So chronology, that's very important. It's tonic followed by clonic and it's all throughout the body. It's generalized. I've tried to record uh, on my own because I could not find any patient. Uh, that's fine. That's a lockdown period. We become more creative at this time. Okay. But one thing is pakka. When this lockdown period gets over now, I will go for master chef. I've acquired a good skills of making good amount of food also. Okay. Right. Now let me go back to the topic. Now, if there is a focal seizure, it could be motor or it could be a non-motor kind of a manifestation. Okay. Motor I have shown you. It can be a tonic. It could be clonic. It could be a sudden jerk, which is known as the myoclonic. And lastly, don't forget, it could be even a tonic. So please do remember these four types of seizure. It's not always analyzed. It can be focal also. Okay, non-motor. Now that's important. The non-motor variety could be sensory. Or uh, sometimes it could be even autonomic. I still remember a case, you know, in my uh, post-graduation, a female came with a history that in her right upper limb, there is a continuous paresthesia, tingling, numbness happening. And I said, okay, okay, you might be having some neck pain, cervical pain, compressing the nerves. And it's a very common thought, you know. 
and I discharge her with some multivitamin at home. And later on, to my surprise, I found the same patient a month later in the neurosurgery OPD because she was having a malignancy in the brain. She was having a space occupying lesion in the parietal cortex. If you remember, the parietal is a sensory cortex. So the parietal lobe, if at all there is a discrete lesion like a space occupying lesion, will come to you with a sensory kind of symptom. What are the sensory symptoms I mentioned? It could be a single tingling or numbness, paresthesia. So remember the focal seizure is not always motor, it can be non-motor also. And autonomic can be anything, it can be sweating, it can be a kind of a palpitation. So sometimes we find a focal seizure activity doesn't present with a motor symptom. It just comes to you with some kind of a flushing or some autonomic symptoms only. Okay. Now, uh, let me go back to the generalized type. Generalized. Please remember, my dear friends, generalized seizures are again divided as motor or it could be non-motor. Now, please remember this. Motor can be tonic, clonic, myoclonic, and it could also be a tonic. See, please remember this. I'm putting this again and again that the motor manifestation that we found in a seizure can be localized in only one body part or it can be seen all across the body. It can be either of the four types. Non-motor. Remember, non-motor generalized seizure. Now, please tell me if I want to classify them. Okay. If I want to classify them, non-motor generalized seizure, what type will come to your mind first? Tell me a type of seizure which is non-motor and it's coming under generalized. Which one? Which one? Which one? Absence. Good, 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 good. Absence. Now, absence seizure, again, I classify it again. It could be either typical or it could be atypical right it could be typical or atypical we have discussed this also yesterday now one doubt has come in that uh, sir paresthesia means that the patient is having seizure see i'll tell you the fact if a patient comes to you with tingling numbness don't over diagnose them with seizure okay uh, think about this if a patient of focus seizure has come to you with a sensory abnormality something prior to the seizure you'll always have what aura so they will always have a aura preceding all this kind of a thing so you need to connect it like this. So focus either come with aura, come with the ictal phase, can have also a post ictal phase. Okay. So don't worry if you are having some tingling numbness anywhere in the body, don't over diagnose yourself with a brain tumor kind of a thing. I know the most hypochondric patients are medicos in ourself. Okay. So don't worry, all is well for you. Right. Now uh, let me move ahead into another group of things that we need to understand that how am I going to treat an epileptic patient by giving drugs which I know as the anti-epileptic drugs and please do remember this a big question mark if a patient comes to me with the first episode of seizure maybe an intern a postgraduate or maybe a consultant neurologist even would have this kind of a thing always in his mind correct he might think about this yes should i give an anti-epileptic or should i rather wait and watch on this patient okay okay someone pointed out in the chat box people are giving good reviews happy i'm just mentioned this let's go back into this classification thank you for reminding me Non-motor, non-motor manifestation can be a simple behavioral arrest. I just forgot this because that was a connecting part of the question. Now, what was that behavioral arrest, which is non-motor? Okay, a typical stare look. So under the heading of focal, which is non-motor, patient can come to me with a simple behavioral arrest or a stare look. So in that particular question that we were trying to discuss is something that we understand is a focal seizure type but it is a non-motor manifestation okay now don't include it under autonomic it's something separate now 
या एब्सेंट सीजर सर एब्सेंट सीजर एब्सेंट सीजर कम्स विथ सटल मोटर साइंस सर डोंट यू इंक्लूड दिस इन अ मोटर मैनिफेस्टेशन सी दैट्स वाई द नेम वॉज गिवन एज सटल इट्स माइनर इट्स सो माइनर इट इज नॉट सीन बाई एनी वन ऑफ दम आई गिव एन एग्जाम्पल डोंट पैनिक जस्ट इमेजिन दिस a patient of focal seizure with a behavioral arrest that's the only complaint with him has come in the hospital to me first of all in my chamber where i'm sitting in he'll come and tell me doctor i can smell something burning in your room i also sniff here and there i say no nothing is burning he keeps on coming with this complaint now look at this he is having a perception of something which is not externally present you know this is what aura or factory hallucinations right now imagine this this is the patient who has come to you in aura phase that is all factory hallucination which is seen in focal seizure correct now telling me all this the patient goes into a trance phase stops responding i call his name i shake him up the patient doesn't respond to me at all correct and subsequently when the seizure is over he is having a post ictal confusion what has happened is really scared about it now in contrast to this in contrast to this absence now imagine this patient of absence seizure has to come into my hospital my opd is on the fifth floor of the building and there is no lift that day working so the patient has to climb up five floors comes into my chamber of the opd and ask me doctor uh, no he asked me where is my doctor the moment i tell i am your doctor the patient looks at me like this doctor why don't you put a lift outside look at me i did not have a aura face one i just gave a sudden blank look and after this i did not have a post ictal confusion either why i just told the doctor why don't you put a lift outside as if nothing happened with me now since the patient was climbing up five stairs you know or five floors sorry it was an unaccustomed activity and that unaccustomed activity would have caught breathlessness right so this is something that we understand in clinical practice this is how we find a patient of absence is a quite different from a focus is okay now coming back to this old question to give or not to give remember this in clinical practice nowadays we usually don't give anti epileptic to patients who are having provoked seizure now look at this point there is a provoking factor for it so better treat the factor i'll give you quick examples febrile seizure there was a kid with me in the hospital who had fever who had seizure but did not have any kind of an intracranial lesion or infection he was a case of febrile seizure right febrile seizure you treat them by depressing the temperature and maybe giving a sedative short term don't try to Uh, treat them with antiepileptic because if you take care of the fever seizure will not happen it's a provoked seizure another one that we know is alcohol withdrawal seizure withdrawal of the alcohol from the daily life of the patient now look at him look at this now the reason of seizure <coughs> is withdrawal oh sorry is withdrawal of the alcohol correct so what should be the kind treatment if withdrawal of alcohol in the patient's life yes was the was the reason for seizure then what should be the treatment no 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 i know you naughty guys it's not alcohol it's not char bottle vodka okay it's benzodiazepine so that's a very old standard typical question drug of choice doc for a patient with a alcohol withdrawal seizure is always a benzodiazepine analog that we give to the patient it's very simple and straightforward now uh, looking on to the other end see provoked we don't give even in the first episode but yeah in a, another patient who is unprovoked we need to give an antiepileptic to the patient because there is no provoking factor for the patient right 
now doubt came in in the students minds sir absence caesar was provoked or precipitated by hyperventilation genuine doubt but still i have seen a great drug we'll discuss today in absence caesar you give antiepileptic to the patient why i'll tell you this now you know there are some conditions in which we have to give antiepileptic to the patient what are those conditions first of all if the patient has got a family history of seizure disorder correct a patient who has got a family history of seizure disorder is likely to be a genetic problem genes are there with the patient patient lives a life of a epileptic life so it's better to treat the patient with anti epileptic it's very simple second one second one if the patient has come to me in the first episode even but he happens to have an abnormal neurological examination now that's very very important thing that means the patient has come to me in the opd correct with a focal seizure for example at home like in that first question i showed you and now he has come to me in a phase of tots palsy tots palsy i agree will be self recoverable phenomena no doubt on this but there is a discrete lesion there in the brain at one end now that discrete lesion and the surrounding area has got tired we get tots palsy and the discrete lesion and the surrounding area will get up with what a seizure episode so remember this abnormal neurological examination even in the first episode of seizure would always be a indication to start an anti epileptic in the patient any time now look at this family history of seizure disorder can you tell me two seizure types which had a very strong family history of seizure can you tell me that yeah one was a absent seizure and the second one was jovelian myoclonic epilepsy now your doubt is clear i hope absent seizure family history jme family history although jme was precipitated by alcohol and fatigue i told you yesterday absent seizure is precipitated by hyperventilation but they have got a got family history background so it's better to treat such patient rather than leave them untreated okay now look at this if at all there is an abnormal neurological uh, or maybe ct scan or the mri scan in the patient that i can think about imaging or could be an eeg if something wrong on the ct mri or maybe the eeg is found it's always better to treat such patient with an anti epileptic drug correct now i'll ask you one direct and a standard question what is the investigation of choice for a seizure disorder please answer me this what is the investigation of choice for a seizure disorder if i want to diagnose and pinpoint the patient is having seizure or not the investigation of choice should be what yes eeg electro encephalogram correct there is no doubt on this correct now i'll i'll show you this i'll show you this question it are see on this page okay uh which of the following is an indication to start an anti epileptic drug in the patient with a seizure disorder okay that's a very standard clinical kind of a question that we find focal seizure with a normal mri focal seizure with glioma on mri with a normal eeg first seizure following an alcohol withdrawal first seizure along with a stoke adams attack correct i will do one thing we we'll look at every option and find the best possible answer a stoke adams attack is something which is a syncopal kind of a thing remember this it occurs due to bradycardia very often and this bradycardia will cause hypoxia in the patient's brain why because this bradycardia will always cause hypotension in the patient and a hypoxic injury any time in the brain will result in a myoclonic jerk or a myoclonic seizure so in such patients my attempt should be not to treat the myoclonic jerks is to treat the cause of bradycardia very common in elderly i have seen this they come to me with a chb a complete heart block kind of a thing so they can kind of having this over and over again so it's better to put a pacemaker inside them okay 
Now, first seizure following alcohol withdrawal. Now, this is important. We give what? Benzodiazepine, correct? And don't give me this gyan that benzodiazepine is an anti-epileptic drug. No, it's a different kind of a thing. I know this. Now, what are we left with? First seizure with a normal MRI. First seizure with glioma on MRI and a normal EEG. Correct. Now, what do you answer this? Now, the moment you read the normal EEG, you get a convincing thought that possibly the EEG is normal. Patient is not going to have the next seizure. See, I've seen this. You might also find it that very commonly in our clinical practice between the two episodes when I get the EEG done, which I know as an interictal EEG, it's very commonly found to be normal. So don't worry. Glioma on MRI will have an upper hand this time because that's an abnormal MRI kind of a thing. So it's always better to treat such patient rather than leaving them untreated because they are having a higher chance of recurrence of seizure again and again. First seizure with a normal MRI. Now this is something fishy now. I cannot very comfortably and uh, mark this kind of an answer because in such a question there is no background history given to me. Is it a case of absence seizure, JME or something? So A versus B, I'll go with B as a more appropriate kind of an answer. Okay. So use your conscience, use your knowledge in such kind of question. These are clinical questions in which you don't have to mark the correct answer. You have to mark the most appropriate answer every time. Correct. Now we look at this. <coughs> it's getting hand. At my end, the relay is absolutely clear. Don't oh. Right. Now another good concept is this. When to stop? When to stop an anti-epileptic drug in a patient who is known to be epileptic to me? Okay. When to stop the anti-epileptic drug in a patient who is known epileptic to me? For this the very first thing is this. First thing, patient should be seizure free for at least minimum two years till five years on anti epileptic drug therapy. So if you have worked in the OPD any time and you have come across any epileptic patient, the protocol and the recommendation tells me this. When I start the anti-epileptic drug, I give it for two years time. Then I gradually, I'm using the word word gradual here. I taper it over a one year time and somewhere in the third year, I happen to stop it. So the total duration of therapy is coming out to be two plus one, three years. Now, this is something from pharmacology that you understand. Why do you take so much time for tapering this drug? Why don't you uh, take them down or take them out of the treatment quite early like in steroids you do a rapid tapering maybe. See the point here is a uh, very common thing that you might see the sudden withdrawal. The sudden withdrawal of anti epileptic agent. Anytime. If you stop the drug anti-epileptic all of a sudden, the patient is going to throw a seizure. So that's the problem with these patients. So never taper it abruptly. Taper it in such a way that during the phase of tapering, the patient doesn't throw a seizure. Correct? So that's the first thing that we understand. Second thing that we all should know about when I think of stopping the drug. Now this is something relevant which has been included in the newer editions of Harrison. There should not be any kind of a family history seen in the patient. Now look at this. If a patient has got a <coughs> epilepsy or seizure disorder, sorry, <coughs> sorry. What would happen is that uh, and the patient in the background has got a family history. Now the cause is genetic. Genes are there with the patient and the patient will live a, li live a life of an epileptic patient. So there is, should not be any kind of a family history seen in the patient. If there is a family history, yes, there is a higher chances of reoccurrence of seizures. So should be very clear. There should not be any kind of a family history. Third thing, patient should also possess a normal neurological examination. 
very important thing when i think of stopping or tapering the drug normal neurological examination should always be there in the patient that's very very important thing okay then apart from this don't forget a normal eeg is again something that will help me out if the patient has got an abnormal eeg then means that we are not in the right direction of treatment so we should continue the drug because eeg is something not only for diagnosing and also for prognosticating a patient that means the drug is well responding in the patient or not so these are the four classical things that we look into a patient when we ever think of uh, stopping a drug okay now looking at this thing you know uh, i wrote this down in a classroom live section i remember this question you know <laughs> a student uh, many students like you as uh, not in the live classroom but at least you are uh, taking out time uh, to come online for us thanks a lot thanks a lot really salute to all your patience that you have got to study it's good to really help you and a student who doesn't attend any classroom teaching or any kind of online just buy some notes from outside a student uh, bought our notes outside because they are available photocopy here and there all this black market thing and a student saw this thing in a photocopy note and he got confused and he put this photo of this and put me on the facebook club and asked me sir what is the answer for this question look at the question now so what is the answer for this question i said where can you see the question he said sir here the question mark is there no this is the question i said where are the options sir these are the four options a b c and d <laughs> see that's the darsham that you get Drishyam was a nice movie. I hope you must have seen Ajay Devgan star a tabu. If you not seen, let me remind this. Two October, third October, Pau Bhaji. Yeah. So my dear friend, the answer is all of the above. That means whenever I think, I think of uh, kind of stopping the therapy. All four things should be there with my patient. Then only I consider for stopping the therapy. Otherwise, I continue the drug. Let me put this correct in a. Uh, in an mcq let me put this through in an mcq this concept which i am talking about okay a 24 year old man with a past history of significant head injury 10 years ago okay is on valproic acid 1000 mg twice daily for gtcs last seizure episode occurred almost 6 years back now look at the patient he had a head injury 10 years ago he is on an anti epileptic valproic acid and the last seizure episode occurred 6 years back this is very important now on physical examination his uh, normal cognition and effect is seen that means his understanding power and its mood his mentation everything is fine but he has got an ongoing focal lower limb weakness with spasticity now look at this term spasticity is something a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion that means something wrong in the brain has occurred and his eeg is also normal which of the following factor is of great concern regarding seizure reoccurrence while tapering the antiepileptic drug oh my god a very good student who got selected this year you know told me a very quick thing sir whenever i see a big question like this sir i take this as a super over in which i'll get get more runs actually and first thing i should always concentrate is this the last line what are they asking me so that if i try to read the question i try to find the best answer and i've already underlined the keywords correct now look at this a patient has got a head injury let me go with the timeline of the patient head injury occurred almost 10 years back 10 years back not now and the patient developed a post traumatic epilepsy or a seizure disorder and that seizure which happened it occurs 6 years ago so he has been 6 years time which is seizure free time i could have stopped it but the problem with this patient was i am seeing in him the low limb weakness with spasticity as i told you spasticity is a human sign okay now what could have led on to low limb weakness as spasticity think about it injury in the body if you know this pathologically heals by what fibrosis but injury in the brain would heat by what gliosis so there is a gliosis kind of a thing which has occurred in the brain and that particular gliotic scar 
might be causing this kind of a problem in the patient. Now remember this, this particular glyotic scar is the epileptogenic focus all throughout the life. Even though the patient is having a normal EEG, he might have a recurrent seizure because of this epileptogenic focus glyotic scar. So my best answer will be the focal defect of neurological examination. Head trauma itself, we don't give it lifelong, but if they come to me with this kind of a error, then it's always better to give them a lifelong therapy. Okay. So it's a very easy and a simple question. Don't worry. Okay. Right. We are V. We are here. Now the point here is what drug should be given to the patient? Yeah, if there's a family history, we don't stop the drug. We continue it. Hmm. Sir, if there is an incidental abnormality detected on neuroimaging, what should I give an anti-epileptic drug? I'll come to that specific situation. Don't worry. Okay. Spasticity means uh, a stiffness in the body. Yeah. Which can be velocity dependent in one part only. Okay. You we'll, we'll read about this in physio. Don't worry. Okay. I'll, I'll come to your doubts. Your doubts are genuine this time. Now the point here is what drug should be given to the patient a drug of choice that hmm, right. drug of choice. Okay. Now we've got many drugs anti epileptic that we give for treatment. Remember this the drug of choice should be decided as per two things. The, uh, effect and most important is the side effect okay effect and the side effect okay so these are the two things that we take care in the patient the effect and the side effect of the drug so the first foremost thing that we always consider about is a good effect and a lesser side effect okay so my dad was sitting here just went around no. he got scared looking at me he thought I'm having some seizure episode. <laughs> he just came running to me. What happened? I said, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, it happened in my classroom once, you know, uh, I was taking class in South somewhere and a child in the, and a student in the class suddenly thrown a GTCS. Oh my God. You know what, what happened when the GTCS happened, the whole bass started looking at me. <laughs> I said, no, this was the first chapter. So some great students started turning pages also. And one student got up in the crowd, you know, uh, and started shouting, please call some doctor, please call some doctor. I said, he must be pakka in intern, you know. <laughs> okay. Right. So drug of choice. Now drug of choice to be decided in any patient with epilepsy is on two things. One remember, we are giving a patient a drug which should be able to control the seizure. That means a good effect. And above all, a lesser side effect should be there with the drug. That should be the thing because we give it lifelong. Like people asking me this uh, family history present. Do we give lifelong? Yes, give it lifelong. It's always better. Okay, but lifelong therapy or even two years of therapy will invite a lot of problem, which I know as a side effect, right? So it's always better to decide the best drug drug of choice on two things effect and the side effect. Now, let me start with this focal season. Focal seizure. In a patient with focal seizure, what are the first line drugs that we give for therapy? In a patient with focal seizure, what are the first line drugs that we give for therapy? That's a very old mnemonic. I still remember I made this around four or five years back. Okay. Lokpal is still valid. L stands for Lamotrigy. The O stands for ox carbazepine, C stands for carbazepine, P goes with phenytoin, and L stands with levitriacetam, a newer antiepileptic in the market that we have now. Now let me see all these drugs. Let me see all these drugs. Uh, as for the side effects that they have, correct? 
let me start with carbazepine first carbazepine cbz is a abbreviation for carbazepine okay now carbazepine therapy comes to us with a side effect of hyponatremia low sodium and second thing it can come to me with a aplastic anemia as a side effect right now the reason for hyponatremia in carbazepine users don't forget it was often siadh syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone adh if you got excess of adh is going to reabsorb more water reabsorption of more water is going to dilute the blood and dilution factor will go into hyponatremia you'll read in endocrine don't worry just a point here again even oxcarbazepine therapy can cause the same problem hyponatremia not only carbazepine even oxcarbazepine could do it now don't forget p for problem and p for phenytoin that's the real problem if you have got problems you're going to have headache and the headache word starts with the alphabet h don't forget in phenytoin users we got 6h with us the very first h the side effect with it is hypersensitivity second h that we have is hyperglycemia then another h is hyperplasia of the gums that we have another h don't forget very important is occurring in pregnancy yes the fetal hydratoin syndrome yes fetal hydratoin syndrome let me take out this topic from obstetrics also because it's a high yield one in hydratoin syndrome what do we find in the patient not in the patient actually in the neonate or maybe the infant yes micro in cephaly a small head size that we find with them hypoplasia of the limb that the limbs are somewhere very short in size and of course cleft lip and palate could be seen in the patient so there are some phenotypes that we need to know about a fetal hydratoin syndrome cleft lip cleft palate hypoplasia of limb and microencephaly so these are the four phenotypes of the fetal hydratoin syndrome and don't forget hirsutism also another h that we need to include here and last h any time is hepatitis so these are the six h that we find in a patient on phenytoin therapy any time apart from this don't forget we happen to see an anemia also in the patient that is the megaloblastic anemia or the macrocytic anemia and this megaloblastic anemia occurs in them due to folic acid deficiency very important thing in clinical practice when you work out you will find megaloblastic anemia very common but megaloblastic most of the time occurs in indian population as b12 but in this case it's folic acid deficiency plus 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 osteomalacia also that is a bone kind of a thing problem that's why if you are working in the opd and you prescribe this phenytoin tablet to any patient don't forget to prescribe a folic acid and a calcium supplement along with it otherwise the patient will come to you with all these problems later on okay now another thing that we all should know about is the levi triacetam levi triacetam yes therapy causes irritability and the mood disorders two things irritability and the mood disorders are seen with levi triacetam therapy are the side effects of levi triacetam therapy irritability and the mood disorders correct which drug for 6h a problem drug phenytoin phenytoin causes this 6h now we have another one in the top lamotrigine why did we put lamotrigine as a drug on the top lamotrigine drug on the top why because it causes the side effect if you remember steven johnson syndrome but don't forget the incidence of steven johnson in these patient is just 1% or less than that even so something in medicine department or even neurology practice that we find that most of the neurologists are considering now lamotrigine as a safest drug see 
all the four drugs in the Lokpal are the first line drugs. But the most preferred of them will be the one which has got good effect and the lesser side effect. That is nothing but your lamotrigine therapy. Because the side effect which does happen is quite rare. Just 1% of these patients on lamotrigine therapy are going to come to me with this kind of a problem. So the question framed one liner would be like this drug of choice for focal season. Don't hesitate to mark it as a lamotrigine. Okay. But remember the mnemonic also Lokpal. And if you remember this old saying, life is a race. Who came first in the race, you know him. Who came second and third, no one is bothered about him. So if you don't find Lamotrigine, what do you mark? Ox Carbizepine, Carbizepine, Phenytoin, Levitriastam. In this order. Okay, don't forget the order also. Okay. I'll give you a question. I'll give you a question. Don't worry. I'll put this thing correctly into an MCQ. Right. A 72 year old gentleman with a normal renal function correct, presents with a new onset focal seizure. Which of the following is the best drug to manage such a patient? His age is 72 year old. He is an elderly male. Okay. And he has got a normal renal function now. The kidney function test KFT, the urine creatinine dynamine is perfectly normal. And he comes to me with a new onset focal seizure. What is the best drug to give him? Life is a race. Who came first? Lamotrigine. Now the problem is Lokpal mnemonic. One thing. Okay. Valprate and pre are out of the mnemonic. So they are not the answers for me. Yeah, the common mistake that you will always do it to be marking it as ox carbazepine and most of you are doing this now. I can see this. Right? So what do I do? See, remember this. Elderly people are very commonly predisposed to this problem of hyponatremia. They predispose, I'm writing this. They could have it anytime. So now what happens in an elderly person, you give them a Ox carbazepine therapy. If you remember the side effect of ox carbazepine, hyponatremia is going to go there only since he is predisposed at his age. So remember, my dear friend, the answer is not ox carbazepine, it is levy triacetam this time. And remember this your examiner is very good also. He has given a very nice clue. KFT is normal. If you remember, levy triacetam, I am abbreviating it is LVTR. Yes is exclusively excreted via the renal route. So don't forget renal profile of the patient is perfectly normal. So nothing to worry, nothing to panic. Okay. Right. So what you think is the answer is not the correct answer. There's always a drisham that you need to see. There is always a difference between a truth and a fact. Okay, take care of this Drisham. Okay. Achha, one, one student is getting emotional. Say, sir, elderly people are irritable also, sir. <laughs> Not all elderly are irritable. Uh, most of our ministers and the great managers of the country are elderly. Do you find them irritable? No, no they are perfectly fine, sound mind. Okay, don't tell your own experiences on this kind of a question. We need to go with the facts. Right. Chal. Now let's see this one. What am I going to go for a GTCS? GTCS. Okay. People are asking me this, sir. If the KFT is abnormal, sir, what do I do then? See, the KFT is abnormal is better to avoid in this case. Uh, Levy triacetam. You can go with Lamotrigine. Okay, but the examiner is not giving me that question. He's so kind to me. So don't imagine your examiner is so cruel. He's good. He's not the COVID kind of a virus which is going to harm you. Now GTC is. What nonsense. Break. What break you want? It's two hours class here. Enjoy Madi. Chill Madi. Why you want to take a break? Are you feeling bored? No, I'm not feeling bored. Okay, GTC is. GTC is. Hey, no breaks. 
Now GTCs. In GTCA there are three drugs V, L and T which are given as a drug to treat a patient of GTCS. Now remember this mnemonic also VLT. Very long training of what? MBBS. Like guys you go for MBBS and suddenly after completion of MBBS in the internship you are posted in the code what? Oh my god. You are going to live or die you don't know. On top of it the government gives you a burden to complete a rural posting. Oh my god. Another one or two years wasted. And then suddenly after post graduation you come to know that another three years of rural posting. So you end up doing only study study all throughout your life. That means if you start doing your MBBS and end up in a village, you will not become a doctor in the village, you will become a sarpanch of the village now, like a panchayat, you know, panchayat head. Okay, it will become a very long training. Now V stands for what? Valproate. Like I was seeing Ramayan, you know, my kids are seeing it every day. I thought if Ramayan was rewritten in this era, Kekai would have not sent Lord Ram for a vanvas. He would have sent him for MBBS. It will be his vanvas will be over over there. Okay, I'm sorry for this secular kind of a joke. I'm not joking about anyone. It's a reality. Lavot regime and topiramate. So valproate, lamotrigine and topiramate are the three things that we give as a first line drug for GTC. Now I want to clarify this concept. I've seen this very often in various guidebooks that lamotrigine is given as a drug of choice for GTCs. No. As per our neurology society, still we stick on to valproate, a broad spectrum drug to control or treat a patient of GTCs. Okay. Now let's let me come on to this the legendary absence seizure. Yeah. Now what's your opinion, my dear friends? Who is the drug of choice for absence seizure? What is the drug of choice for absence seizure? Any ideas for this? Yes, three drugs E, V, L. E stands for ethosuximide. V stands for valproate. And L stands for lamotrigine. Ethosuximide, valproate, lamotrigine, write it down. Drug of choice. Nation should know this. Nation should know this. That for absence seizure, the drug of choice is ethosuximide, not valproate. And write this also down. Ethosuximide is available in India. Okay. So, Ache Din has come in India for something. Ethosuximide at least. Not for treatment for COVID, but ethosuximide is there. So nation should know this. So ethosuximide is available in India. And please remember this also. For all age groups, for all age groups, the drug of choice for absence seizure is always, always ethosuximide. In India abroad, everywhere, it is always, always ethosuximide. Please don't ask this question on Facebook. I'll kill you there only. Okay, I've got so bugged about this question that I've named my daughter as ethosuximide. Okay, <laughs> my son has lamotrigine. My wife is a broad spectrum valproate. And I'm the problem in the family phenytoin, you know him. Now, another drug, please remember this. People were asking me yesterday, sir, atypical absence seizure. Atypical absence seizure. For these patients, remember this, the drug of choice is valproate. Correct? For atypical absence seizure, please remember the drug of choice is valproate. I agree. I agree with your thought. There is a poor response to the anti-epileptic drugs. I agree with you. But something I should always know about is that one drug which could be given to them is valproate, a broad spectrum one to them always. Okay. Drug of choice for GTC is people are asking me again. I don't know why are you asking me. V for victory, V for valproate. Remember this way. Drug of choice for absence seizure. Ethosuximide for all age groups. Drug of choice for focus is a lamotrigine. Now please remember this topic. Very important and pay attention to this. 
pregnancy something has changed a lot about our approach in pregnant female who is an epileptic patient also parallel okay now in pregnancy there are few consideration man what is the safest or oblique i can put as a word least teratogenic safest or the least teratogenic anti epileptic drug to be given to the patient please remember this in pregnancy the safest and the least teratogenic anti epileptic drug there is something in new chain that we are not of discussed in every batch this year even no it's not lamotrigine my dear friend for pregnancy for pregnancy the least teratogenic now as per the recent trials and literatures that we have is oxcarbazepine followed in the list by levetiracetam levetiracetam correct followed in the list by lamotrigine that you know followed in the list by carbazepine that we have followed in the list by the drug the old one the phenobarbital so these are few drugs that we have tried to compare with each other among themselves itself and now we come to a consensus which is a recent one i am stressing on this. this is a recent data that we have with us so no drug anti epileptic is 100% safe in pregnancy first thing you remember this every drug is going to have a problem and one drug which has the safest and the least teratogenic potential is nothing but my ox carbazepine any time okay now the concept is slightly different when you need to learn about this topic separately like if they ask you what is drug of choice anti epileptic in pregnancy if a one liner comes don't hesitate to mark it as ox carbazepine there is no problem in it but remember this the drug of choice ideally should be as per the seizure type should be as per the seizure type first thing should ideally be a drug monotherapy monotherapy not many only one and above all don't forget the drug that you should give to the patient should be given as the lowest effective dose so there are three things that we need to consider first as per the seizure type the drug should be given it should only be one drug and should be given at the lowest effective dose that we know let me give you an example for gtcs the drug of choice please remember v for victory uh, someone told v for vikas i am happy valproat okay so v for victory v for valproat but my dear friend v for villain also if you know this concept valproat if at all in pregnancy could create a problem what neural tube defect now the neural tube defect the incidence is somewhere 10 to 20% not 100% now look at this data available with me that means not all females on valproate are going to have this neural tube defect only 20% that means 100 females in the opd are taking valproate in pregnancy only 20 of them will have a neural tube defect in rest of the 80 is going to be all is well normal correct now follow this that means the anti epileptic drug that we gave is not is not 100% teratogenic that means that the drug i am giving to the patient is not going to create teratogenicity all the time it's not 100% follow this line monotherapy and above all the lowest effective dose are the three two more important things if i give only one drug not many drugs if i give it at the lowest effective dose all is well i'm not going to face any teratogenic effect of the drug in a pregnant female also now follow this do not do not do not change treatment during pregnancy correct do not change treatment during pregnancy whatever the female is taking let her take that only 
do not change the treatment during pregnancy okay why the reason is changing anti epileptic drug during pregnancy can precipitate seizure disorder a big problem just an example i'll give you someone was asking me in between also sir if a female is taking phenytoin in pregnancy and you know the fetal hydatoin is a problem attached with it teratogenicity what should i tell see this female comes in my opd just an example listen to me patiently on phenytoin therapy i am scared of teratogenic effect what should i do should i stop the drug first of all no i should taper the drug phenytoin and give her a drug which is comparatively less teratogenic maybe oxcarbazepine I'll taper lamotrigine, oh sorry, phenytoin, and give her oxcarbazepine. Now, do I taper it over one year in pregnancy? If I taper it over one year, the baby will be out by that time. Okay, so you don't taper it over one year. You might be tapering over one or two months faster, na? So what will happen in a faster kind of a withdrawal of the drug, and a new drug doesn't come in at that moment? What will happen? There is going to be imbalance, and such an imbalance in the levels of the drug in the brain. will create what a seizure simple concept so in pregnancy we try to give a drug whatever she is on already i don't change it during pregnancy because changing anti epileptic during pregnancy can precipitate seizure which i know as a term breakthrough seizure break through seizure so there is a term with us known as the breakthrough seizure which you are really scared of that means the drug that you are giving to the patient might uh, not harm the patient in such a way that during because of the therapy there is not too much of teratogenicity and maybe changing the therapy is going to create a more problem for the patient okay so please clarify this concept do not change therapy during pregnancy anti epileptic drug because changing therapy is going to precipitate seizure let me put this all let me pull this all into an mcq this one 29 year old 4 month pregnant primary gravida has come with a history of jovelin myoclonic epilepsy she has been regularly taking sodium valproate now seeks an opinion for an anti epileptic drug regimen what would you suggest her look at the keywords she is 29 year old young female she is 4 month pregnant she is in the first trimester of pregnancy second trimester sorry she is first time pregnant primary gravida she is a known case of jovelin myoclonic epilepsy and she takes a drug which is valproate what would you suggest her she is already pregnant yes continue valproate with monitoring of the drug level the reason is very very clear we do not change treatment during pregnancy okay now if at all she is pregnant and she is taking valproate what extra thing would you like to give her yes the extra thing i'll always like to add up in the first trimester at least is what the folic acid supplement simple now the question comes in the question comes in if a such a patient comes to you in pregnancy you like to give a folic acid supplement but the biggest question mark is when to start this kind of a supplement yeah there are two schools of thought one is the gynae other one is the medicine thought the medicine people say start it as asap as soon as possible from the whatsapp group yes we have it the abbreviation asap as soon as possible and the second best answer is 3 months prior to pregnancy so at least 3 months prior to pregnancy we should have given her a folic acid supplement because it would be enough to build up a good level of the folic acid in the patient and whenever she conceives in the first trimester she will have enough of amount so as soon as possible is the best possible answer because i don't know in what what cycle she conceives she conceives in the next cycle and now she gets pregnant on valproic acid and she comes in the second or third trimester it's too late to stop or rather change or do anything for the patient now okay 
now uh, you know when i was a student uh, in my graduation days i was always being taught by my professors that you know if a female comes in the opd pregnant and she is epileptic tell her to do only one thing miscarriage or rather stop the pregnancy uh, tell her to abort because this drug which we are giving to the patient is going to harm the fetus inside and the second thing that we have in the female can be a problem because of the drug so remember this write it down seizure frequency during pregnancy so now look at this old 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 school of thought you know if a female pregnant comes in the opd and she is having uh, anti epileptic therapy at the same time the old school of thought used to be like this you know i've seen the old eastman movies there was a operation theater in the hospital with a zero watt bulb over there you know i never seen that and suddenly the bulb used to switch off and the doctor in the mask used to come out and ask the relatives what should i go and save mother or the child uh, save the mother that's a simple thing but this time the things are different now seizure frequency during pregnancy <coughs> sorry remember this in 50% of the females it actually remains unchanged that means neither there is an increase neither there is a decrease in the seizure frequency somewhere in uh, around 30% of the females we found there was an increase in the seizure frequency and this increase in the seizure frequency occurs okay due to one reason which i know as emesis see in emesis what happens in pregnancy in the first trimester especially we find in the patient there is a very poor absorption of the anti epileptic drug happening so the drug that we giving to the patient oral in pregnancy if they are continuously and retching and vomiting obviously the drug won't be absorbed that well so that will decrease the level of the drug and create a seizure in itself and around 20% it might decrease also now look at this why would it decrease decrease in the seizure frequency in pregnancy in 20% could be due to hormones now i remember there are two hormones in females that we understand one is the progesterone and the second one happens to be the estrogen both these hormones have got a different way of exciting the brain you know remember this progesterone is a hormone that we see is going to increase the seizure threshold remember this while estrogen as a hormone is going to decrease the seizure threshold so the question framed is somewhere like this which hormone which hormone which hormone is epileptogenic it's going to be estrogen because it is going to be decreasing the seizure threshold so i remember like this e for estrogen e for epilepsy p for protection and p comes for progesterone okay right so in pregnancy if you know the physiological things progesterone is something that we have in a higher amount to sustain the pregnancy yes so protection will come from progesterone this time and that protection will decrease the seizure frequency because it is going to increase the seizure threshold right now uh, remember this also breast milk you know if the female is uh, feeding the child during the breast feeding there is going to be excretion of the anti epileptic drug that we see okay now which drug is maximally excreted in the breast milk which drug is having a minimum excretion in the breast milk so it's not breast feeding i'll put it as breast milk excretion of the anti epileptic drug remember this now maximal excretion happens for a drug that was levetiracetam okay 
and the minimum excretion happens for valproate. Now, student came back and asked a genuine doubt on this. So, if a female is on an anti-epileptic drug, for example, and now what I find in her that she is on levetiracetam therapy, for example, now what should I tell her? Change it to valproate or stop breastfeeding? Remember two things. First thing, in a female on anti-epileptic and she is epileptic and she is breastfeeding, the breastfeeding is recommended first of all it is not stopped secondly secondly anti-epileptic drug is also continued is also continued so second thing we found later on in a lot of studies that maybe the drug that we are giving might be coming out in the breast milk but it's not actually harming the neonate or the infant so badly so all is well don't worry the drug is continued and the breastfeeding is also recommended at the same time. Okay. Now I'll come back to this topic, a very important topic, Jovaline myoclonic epilepsy. Because many students are now asking me a genuine doubt, sir, if you are planning a pregnancy in a female, what are the drugs that we can think about while giving her? I'll answer this in the concept of JME. Now, first thing in JME, you all know the anti-epileptic drug has to be given what? Lifelong. Why lifelong? Two points. Remember, it was a family history positive. Yes. And in these patients, we find myoclonus was often precipitated by fatigue or maybe alcohol. So it could happen that fatigue happens and the patient throws a seizure again. So it's always better and safer to give an anti-epileptic not for one year, two year, three years. It's always better to give it lifelong. Now the question comes in, what are the drugs that we find in JME useful? There are three drugs, VLL. V stands for valproate. L stands for lamotrigine. And another L stands for levetiracetam, a newer anti-epileptic agent. Correct? Three drugs. Now don't forget two drugs that we don't want to give in a patient of JME any time is carbazepine and phenytoin. Because remember this, carbazepine and phenytoin is going to increase the myoclonus. So the myoclonic jerks which are occurring in a patient of JME would often increase whenever carbazepine and phenytoin is given to them. So two anti-epileptic drugs which are often contraindicated, as I can use the word contraindicated, not to be given any time in a patient of JME is nothing but carbazepine and phenytoin. Okay. Now, uh, I'll put this scenario very clear to you because this has been very frequently asked and you should know about it. You know, the scenario is like this, a female who happens to be a fertile female, she could conceive in any cycle, is a known case of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, correct? And now she is taking valproate as the drug of choice. Now she has come to you in the OPD. Remember this, in a stage that we consider as pre pregnancy not during pregnancy she has come to you in a pre-pregnant stage she is planning to conceive what option should I give her please answer my question now first of all why had she come to you she has come to you because before coming to you she has consulted a doctor at home Dr. Google who gives you only information not knowledge and Dr. Google writes that V for villain Valproate causes neural tube defect. Stop the drug. Don't give it ever. It's contraindicated as per Google. Now the patient got frightened. Oh my God, I have to take a drug which might harm the fetus intrauterine. Why not change the drug? During pregnancy, she cannot change. Prior to pregnancy, she has got time. She can change the drug. Now what drug, what option should I give her to change? Tell me the answer, please. Yes. Now the consensus here is 
लेविट्रियास्टम और लैमोट्रिजिन आई एग्री आई एग्री पीपल हैव रिटन ऑन द चैट बॉक्स आल्सो दैट इन फॉर्मेट दे डू टेल दैट लैमोट्रिजिन कैन एग्जैबरेट मायोक्लोनस बट इट्स अ कंफ्लिक्टिंग काइंड ऑफ अ डाटा दैट वी स्टिल फाइंड बट टू बी ऑन अ सेफर साइड व्हाट शुड आई गिव अ लैमोट्रिजिन और लेविट्रियास्टम यस when i know the teratogenicity effect when i know the drug is a first line why not to give a drug which is less teratogenic and maybe the first line drug that is levetiracetam it's very simple okay so that's a consensus that we have in a fertile female if she is having a jme and she wants to take a drug change the drug pre pregnancy what should i change it to levetiracetam simple telling all this story a student came to me with a different doubt you know what doubt did he have don't write this doubt sir what should i do in a fertile male a fertile male comes to you with a jme sir should i also tell him to change from valproate to lamotrigine or levetiracetam tell me fertile male <laughs> when i uh, when i listen to this doubt <laughs> i told the student it's better you read biology first then medicine <laughs> your medicine is good but your biology is very bad you know i still remember uh, i was taking a live classroom lecture outside delhi and there was one institute of pmt coaching also sharing the building with us that was akash so above it was akash institute and below it was dam so above it was akash and below patal dams suddenly i saw eight standard students you know eight standard students with a bag in their hand going to akash institute so eight standard they have not reached puberty look at the daring you know they want to prepare for pmt they have not reached puberty even so what happened is i stopped them they said uncle when the amount of respect they gave me they told me uncle why you are stopping us you are a doctor you should encourage us to become doctor i said beta i am a good doctor it is my duty to save life okay so it put them on the right track right so some jokes are often required so don't write all this shit kind of thing in a fertile male jme it should be don't write all these things some one from the photocopy department will always ask me a doubt on this i know okay right now i'll take you into another concept the last nail in the coffin of caesar the status epilepticus that we have with us the status epilepticus okay now first of all pay attention to this because this topic status is going to improve your status in the exam because one at least in one exam in a year i always get a question on this so it is going to improve your status okay now first of all the definition part be clear on this the definition part of the status you know seizer disorder the seizure is lasting in the patient for a duration of more than equal to 5 minutes so we find in the patient the ictal phase of the seizure the phase that we find the seizure in the patient movement the ictal phase that we find if it is more than 5 minutes it is defined as status so please take care of this definition earlier it used to be half an hour then they change it to 15 now the consensus that the guidelines now put it at 5 minutes another quick definition is this or or the interictal the interictal loss of consciousness is more than equal to half an hour 30 minutes now what do i mean by the word interictal now that's very important there is a patient who comes to me with caesar another patient same patient sorry not the another one same patient again comes to me with caesar now between the two there is loss of consciousness so there are two episodes simultaneously and between the two episodes the patient is unconscious so we name this as interictal loc if it is lasting for more than half an hour it is defined as status 
so please remember the definition it is going to come it's something which will improve your status okay now there was a question i remember two years back in neat pg we got a question epilepsia partialis continua epilepsia partialis continua the question was epilepsia partialis continua is seen in that was a question being asked is it seen in a patient with absent seizure gtcs or focal now first of all i don't understand what what in harrison they want to prove because every time i read harrison i think it's written by shashi tharoor you know <laughs> so difficult kind of works like firago kind of things you know epilepsia partialis continua so don't be like shashi tharoor be like chetan bhagat simple english uh, partial seizure partial seizure right partial seizure was what focal seizure yes so a patient of focal seizure yes has come to you in status epilepticus is known as epilepsia partialis continua remember this fact so a patient of focal seizure who has come to you in status for lasting for more than 5 minutes is known as epilepsia partialis continua so one end is tharoor kind of in english other end is the chetan bhagat kind of in english a simple one okay so a continuous seizure in a focal seizure status epilepsia partialis continua so no firago on this uh, i'll request you to do one thing take a full page for this we are going to make a flow chart we are going to make a flow chart in which we like to see the treatment protocol for status so i'll request you to take a full page for this one so that we write from the above and we end on this you know start proximal and distal like a jacksonian march and no torch palsy please okay now a uh, full page for this now when i want to see the treatment of status please remember that this is something very uh, commonly asked nowadays we give the patient a drug which is going to stop the seizure right now which is happening that is known as the lorazepam now remember this the lorazepam is given at the dose of 0.1 mg per kg of body weight that's the dose of lorazepam that's the drug that we give to stop the ongoing seizure it's a benzodiazepine analog or another drug that we have with us is midazolam midazolam is 0.2 mg per kg of body weight correct this is what is the dose of lorazepam and midaz that we have with us both of them are benzodiazepine analog and given please don't forget a consensus is there clear on it the drug of choice for status is always always lorazepam if lorazepam is not given in the option go with midazolam and in case if midaz loraz both of them are not been given go with their father benzodiazepine he is still alive in a government hospital you know tiger zinda hai lorazepam is still alive but please remember this what is the route of administration that we use for them uh for lorazepam the route of administration is intravenous or iv but for midazolam yes the route of administration could be iv or could be im so this came as a question recently that uh, a patient is in status for the last 5 minutes and we cannot hold the patient put a iv line or a cannula inside and suddenly what happened patient seizure is not stopping what drug should i give look at this midazolam can be given through the route im also so it is a good drug it can be given through the intramuscular route even if you don't have a cannula there you can use the drug okay another point now i am putting an arrow now remember this arrow means that i have to give the next one i stop the seizure by loraz or midaz whatever then i have to give another thing which is nothing but my iv anti epileptic drug iv anti epileptic drug okay that we know now iv anti epileptic drug which we give as the protocol says is number 1 phenytoin phenytoin is still used in the emergency room and everywhere and phenytoin is given at the dose of around 20 mg per kg of body weight 
at the rate of infusion of 50 mg per minute. That is the real rate of infusion for phenytoin that we use. There are a few things that we need to remember. Phenytoin if given faster, if it is given faster, could be a cardiotoxic agent. It can cause arrhythmia if it is given faster. In a faster infusion of phenytoin, more than 50 mg per minute, we can have a cardiac abnormality also like a arrhythmia, heart block, something like this. Okay. Now apart from this, phenytoin as a thing which is always given in a solution that is normal saline. And please don't forget, please don't forget, it is never ever mixed in a solution containing what? Dextrose. It is never ever mixed in a solution containing glucose or dextrose. Why? I hope you know this from pharmacology. Yes, phenytoin precipitates in a dextrose containing solution. So remember this. Phenytoin, whenever you give, you always give it in a mixture or mixed with normal saline, never with dextrose because phenytoin precipitates in dextrose. That's the problem with it. So we have got an alternative now. Phenytoin in a government setup, calculating the dose, rate of infusion, getting all these fluids is a big help. So we got a brother of his, yes, whose name is what? Force phenytoin. A force phenytoin is something which is given at a faster rate of 50 mg per minute. 150, sorry, 150 mg per minute. Now, someone asked me a very quick doubt. So, what's the dose for force phenytoin? Same. We usually keep it at 20 mg per kg of body weight, same dose, but we give it faster. We give it at a rate of 150 mg per minute. Now, the advantages of force phenytoin? Yes. If you know this from pharmacology, it's a very interesting thing. Force phenytoin as a drug I know is less hypersensitive. First thing. Secondly, it can be mixed with a dextrose containing solution. And above all, it's given through the root intramuscular also. So it can be mixed with dextrose. It is less hypersensitive. And it can be given through the IM route also, a force phenytoin kind of an injectable agent. Okay. Good, you know all these things. Or, or that we have with us is the valproate. Now, valproate is something which is given at the loading dose in status patient, approximately average of 25 mg per kg of body weight. That's the average dose that we give to the patient for to the patient. Or we can also use in the patient levy triacetam, the newer anti-epileptic agent that we have with us. And levy triacetam is given at the dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg of body weight. Now, I'm very clever in this. I'm writing or, 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 or. I can give any one of them. I can give any one of them. It's all up to me. Whichever drug I want to give, I'll give it. I'll give an example. You know, a patient is a known case is a known case of GTCS, correct? And he happens to take the drug of choice, that's the valproate. Now, due to some social reason, he stopped taking valproate for just three days. And now he has come to you in the OPD or not OPD, of course, in emergency in status epilepticus. Please tell me what anti-epileptic should I give it to the patient? It's a very simple case. A known epileptic, known case of GTCS on valproate suddenly stopped taking the treatment for three days time and has come in the emergency room in status. What drug should I give it to the patient? Please tell me. Yes. Why you want to give a new drug? First of all, no, I will give the drug which is already on. Now the point here is why this is a patient go into status. Stop paying. Yes. Sudden withdrawal of the drug will precipitate seizure. See, lorazepam 
yes will be given first but i am asking you an anti epileptic drug to be given in that case your answer should be the drug your patient is already on valproate simple you know this happy mugambo khush hua now put an arrow and write caesar again if caesar is still there in spite of all this kind of a treatment what do i give to my patient i give my patient iv midazolam iv midazolam is given at the dose of 0.2 mg per kg of body weight followed by the infusion of 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg per hour now look at this i am giving to my patient again again midas but this time i am giving it as bolus followed by infusion or followed by an infusion or or i could use in the patient another drug that is propofol and if the seizure is still there in the patient then we give it to them thiopentone thiopentone correct so do not remember the dose of every drug please it's becoming a very tedious job for you just remember the protocol see patient comes in status give him a shot of lorazepam seizure will stop but don't forget to load him with an anti epileptic even after anti epileptic the seizure is occurring then go with all these kind of things okay one question being very frequently asked carbazepine happens to be one drug in therapy of stortus epilepticus it is often not recommended to be given because this drug happens to be given through the oral route now just imagine a patient is in status such a bad situation and you give this patient a carbazepine tablet just imagine patient is in status and you give him a carbazepine tablet the tablet will go in today and tomorrow it will work but as they say in hindi no kal ho na ho so you never know kal ho na ho in the patient's life so remember the protocol i'll repeat it again in a patient of status when they come to me we give it lorazepam or midazolam then iv anti epileptic drug phenytoin or phosphenytoin or valproate or levetiracetam depending on the case if the seizure is still there iv midazolam or propofol seizure is still there then we go with thiopentone one drug not recommended oral carbazepine therapy okay let me take out one or two questions on these topics get better and more clinically to this now look at this <clears throat> great question simple answer a known alcoholic is brought to the emergency department by his wife now the point here is he is a known alcoholic and his wife has come along with him that's very important thing now if he would have come alone he would have come to fight with you if his friends have come along with him they have come to fight with you but now his wife has come along with him serious problem the person has not consumed alcohol for the past two days due to religious reasons oh my god might be must be dry days like the lockdown days he is not getting his quota of drug the person complain of nausea vomiting and dizziness on second day he developed seizure that progressed to gtcs which of the following would be the best medication to manage the seizure in the patient now answer me yes good diazepam because it's nothing but a case of what not a case of gtcs it's alcohol withdrawal seizure diazepam simple now this one now this happens to be clinical and a very interesting and a very clever question person waiting for a train on a railway platform starts having a seizure okay right he has a band showing him to be an epileptic on medication right and his medication are in his pocket also look at the scenario now he is waiting at the railway station having a band showing him to be an epileptic and his medication are in his pocket what is the next step that i like to take now i'll start with option d the distal one take the person away from the train give him medication and water and transfer him to the hospital tell me 
D. Should it be the correct answer? Not at all. Just imagine a patient just thrown a scissor. You feed him with water. Yes, something bad will occur in the patient. What? Aspiration. So you might just aspirate at this moment. So be careful. Don't go with option D. Option C is very funny. Look at this. Imagine this option. Option C now. Take the person away from the train. Make him lie down by holding his legs up. Just imagine this. The patient is on the railway platform. You hold him legs up. What are you? Are you a doctor from the bridge course? Patanjali kind of a doctor? Some yogasana I am trying to tell him to do. He will get cured. Uh, Babaji ka ashirvat. No. So don't try to be stupid at that moment. C is never a good thing to be done. Option B. Take the person away from the train. Now people are answering me B. They are from Vasipur or what? Sacred Games people. Mirzapur people are also there. Take the person away from the train. Read it carefully. Stuck a handkerchief in his mouth. <laughs> well, are you from Mirzapur, Vasipur? Tell me that first. You're you going to some do, uh, Sadar Khan or something. You are there. No? You're going to kidnap the patient. Hold his hand and feet. Till the seizure subside and then transfer him to the hospital. No, no, no. I'll die laughing. Don't do this maneuver, please. I've seen this very often. On the roadside show, if you ever see a patient throwing a seizure. People come out with various kind of things. Some uncle will come with his shoe, make the patient smell it. One day I saw a patient of Caesar on the roadside. One auntie brought out an onion, kanda, to make the patient smell it. The moment I saw the payas or the kanda, I kept it in my pocket. Very precious thing, madam. And please don't stuff anything in the patient's mouth because he might asphyxiate because of that. People do ask me, sir, I put a handkerchief inside. It will prevent a tongue bite. What am I doing? If the handkerchief goes inside, he's going to gag because of this. And please don't hold him on the hand and the feet. That is going to be more disaster for him. Okay? Because if you hold the hand and the feet of an epileptic patient, you are more likely to dislocate a limb or something. So don't do this. If you've ever been in the hospital, remember this. Remember this. Jokes apart. Put the patient always in a safe position. Safe position is always considered to be a left lateral position. In the left lateral position, as the left bronchus is more oblique, there are less chances of aspiration. One thing is very clear. Hold the patient. Hold the patient over the hip or maybe the shoulder region. Because these are the kind of joints which are more stable than your hand and the feet. They are unlikely to be a kind of a thing. See, tongue bite. How do you prevent a tongue bite? No, 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 no. See, the protocol still is very clear. No, you cannot prevent a tongue bite so easily in the patient. It's not an easy thing. Okay? Wait for a second. It will get all right. Don't panic. Black will become white. Don't worry. Okay? Right? So hold the patient on the hip and the shoulder and put the patient in the left lateral position. That's the thing. So what do I do next? Take the person away from the train. Make sure he does not fall. Meanwhile, call for a medical help and then transfer him to the hospital. Okay? Right? Now look at this question. Another clinical one. A 16 year old girl is brought to the emergency department after losing consciousness for minutes. She was accompanied by her father who witnessed the event. The clinical feature may help to differentiate between seizure and a syncopal attack. There was a urinary incontinence. Tongue was bitten. There was a brief jerks of the limb or the patient was lying at the bed at the onset. Give a guess on this. Caesar versus Sinko, very tough kind of a topic. Okay, every student has got different answer. I've seen MBBS students who are graduates, who are foundation. They answer me urinary incontinence. Some of the students who don't study answer me jerks in the limb. Some of the students who are interns or post intern, they write tongue is bitten, sir. Let's find the answer. To find the answer, I'll show you a video. 
I'll show you a video. And where has the video gone? Just a second, just a second. I'll play it again. Again, I'll play it. What is this? Tell me, please. My limbs were jerking. There was some uprolling of the eyeball. And I fell unconscious. I fell unconscious. What is this? This is nothing but a syncopal attack. Look at this. I am trying to breathe rapidly, hyperventilate. Hyperventilation is something which can provoke a syncopal attack. And when the syncopal attack happens, due to hypoxic injury in the brain, due to pure perfusion, they can be sudden myoclonic jerks, a proling of eyeball. So it might mimic a seizure, but this is not a seizure, it's a syncopal attack. Let me go back to the question to explain it there. Don't worry, I'll take clear the theory part also. Look at this, urinary incontinence. Even I always thought this, that urinary incontinence will be seen in seizure. No, my dear friend, let me tell you this fact. Caesar versus syncope. Urinary incontinence occurs in both. Please remember, I could not show that thing urinary incontinence in the video. It's prohibited. Fine. But remember this, Caesar and syncope, both of them have got urinary incontinence with them. Now comes a common confusion. Tongue is bitten. Caesar or syncope can be either of the two. Please remember, if you go back and see in your ward, Caesar episode. The tongue bite occurs more often in the lateral margin. In a syncopal attack, please remember, it could be seen on the tip part. Just imagine I was falling down. The tongue might have protruded out. And when I was falling down, there is some clenching of the teeth. And this clenching of the teeth, yes, will bite the tongue on the tip part more often. So syncopal attack have got tongue bite on the tip more often. In the seizure disorder, it's more often in the lateral margin. Now find this out. Brief jerks of the limb. As I've tried to show in the video also, syncopal attack. You know what happens? I fall unconscious. That is syncope. Why do I fall unconscious? There can be less of peripheral blood flow. That means in the periphery, the blood would come out less. Now due to decrease in the peripheral blood flow, there is going to be hypoxia in the brain. Any kind of hypoxic injury in the brain could result in what? Myoclonic jerks. So I'm not classifying it as seizure myoclonic. No, I'm just writing the word certain kind of a jerky movements in a syncopal attack could occur. Please remember, please remember, syncope versus seizure, both of them can present to me with a typical jerky movement. Now, patient was lying in the bed at the onset. Now, answer me this question. Who was a patient? Caesar or syncope? As I was dealing, doing the syncopal attack, I was always in an erect posture, never in a lying down posture. So, lying in the bed, what is more likely to happen? Caesar, not a syncopal attack. So, remember this. Position at the onset is a very important thing which will help me to defer the two events. Caesar or Senko. Okay. Look at this question now. Patient is confused, displays episodes such as grimacing, squirming, flailing of limbs, side to side movement of the head, resistance, and even thrashing at anyone who assists him. Patient displays no aura. EEG during the period is approximately normal. 
Which of the following is the best characteristic of this disorder? Please answer me. That is simple thing. Yes, psychogenic. Why are you not answering it so quickly? Psychogenic. Patient is flailing of limbs, grimacing, squirming, thrashing anyone who attempts to catch him. There is no aura, and above it, the EEG is normal. It is a psychogenic or a pseudo seizure. Now tell me, to find them out, what are the things that we need to do? Yes, serum prolactin. Serum prolactin will be high in a patient with what? True seizure, not a case of pseudo seizure. Right? Yes, syncopal attack can happen in a sitting posture also. Some people are taking it too emotionally. They are telling me, sir, syncopal attack due to hypoglycemia can occur in a lying down posture. Are Baba, hypoglycemia will not cause syncope, it will cause seizure. Which will be in the lying down posture. So don't drag this topic into a different sense. We need to answer the question number 9 in a different way. A clinical way. And the best possible answer is going to be A. Okay. Yeah. So. All is well. That might end well so your doubts are most welcome any doubts please ask me I am there to help you out okay more than this any doubts that we have with us we will be answering this on the Facebook club so please be active I was almost uh, Are Baba Rolandic epilepsy and all Lenox restored you will read in peds Baba why you want to drag into medicine in peds, you will read Rolandic epilepsy. Rolandic epilepsy is an epilepsy occurring in children. If I take out the pediatric epilepsy chapter, it will be another one day. Okay, so some of the things you please keep it with the pediatrician. They are happy to teach that part. Okay. My God. Okay, Bob, so many doubts you've got. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll try to make a PDF of the, all these questions once and I'll put it on the Facebook club. You can take it from there. I'll put it in the app also. I'll try to talk to the technical team. Next lecture, yes, we'll have it tomorrow. We might go into another topic, headache which often gives you a lot of headache, okay. Uh, Oxcarbazepine in Jamie is not a gut drug, good one, because it also might exaggerate myoclonus. There are not many studies done for Oxcarbazepine actually. That's why we are quite limited in the data. Carbazepine and phenytoin will always exaggerate myoclonus in patients of Jamie, okay. So many questions are running. Bob, it's impossible to answer so many questions because it's causing a lot of vertical nystagmus for me. <laughs> okay. Good night, ciao, and any of the doubts that are there, keep with them, you, I'll, I'll try to see them on Facebook. Any other thing which I can add upon on today, I'll deal with it tomorrow. Don't worry. Okay, good night. Stay safe. Stay at home and stay safe.